Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my stamp studio here in Eagle, Idaho. Today is episode two of my Way to Goat stamp set series. Every Tuesday, I am bringing you new ideas with the Way to Goat stamp set from Honeybee. And today we are making some interactive cards shaped like barns. They're adorable. I'm gonna be coloring with colored pencils, doing no line coloring. It's just tons of fun in today's video. And I am going to be doing a card giveaway. You guys all said you loved it, so let's do it again. If you leave a comment below on this video, next Tuesday I will draw out a random winner and I will announce the winner and send you a card from the video right here, right now. All right, let's get started. All right, to start off, we're gonna create the barn shaped card for card number one using the barn scene builder die from Honeybee and also this wood grain background stamp from the woods in the woods by Altenew. I'm gonna stamp that out with some limestone ink from Altenew as well, right onto my cool pool cardstock. This cardstock is a five and a half inches by five and a half inches and fits this background stamp perfectly as well as the die. So once I get that all stamped out, I'm going to cut both of my two pieces using that solid barn shaped die. And you can see there, it fits perfectly. So I'll tape that in place and run it through the die machine. And then we need a hinge to connect the two pieces. This hinge measures two inches by a half of an inch and is scored down the middle at a fourth of an inch. I'm using some one eighth of an inch score tape to um, adhere the two pieces together with this hinge. So first I'm gonna attach it to the back piece of my card and stick that in place and then remove the other piece, actually that was the front and then I'll attach it so that the two pieces line up together and then we have a barn shaped cart. You could do some partial die cutting, but um, I just liked the idea of it opening in this specific spot. Then I trimmed the edge of the uh, roof line off of the back piece so it didn't bend over. Here are all the pieces I die cut to create this card. I've got windows, a window box, some hay, some fence pieces, door pieces, the roof. Um, I have also used some matte silver cardstock right here and we'll go ahead and start putting things together. I like a little shadow on my doors, so I'm taking my T1 marker and going around the edge of my barn doors, this detailed piece that's gonna actually go over the top. Also, because I'm gluing this so it's tone on tone, so a white die cut on a white die cut, so having that little bit of shadow is really gonna stand out in this particular piece. So I'll do two of those, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing things together. So on goes my silver roof. This is a matte finish, so not mirror finish. I thought it was really fun, kind of like um, a tin roof. So I decided after I already put things together that I should have some openings in this card. So I'm tracing where that window's gonna go so I can easily line this die up and run it through my die cut machine, making sure to open my card because I don't want it to go through both sides. Now the little window actually fits inside the die cut. So I had to use a window sheet here. Um, I couldn't just glue it around the edge, which I thought was interesting. It's interesting for sure. So I glued it just like that. And then I added the little um, trough like image there to hold my hay. And then my fence is not gonna fit all the way across. So I'm just gonna use um, half of the fence on each side. And then I'm gonna cut an opening for a door. I wasn't gonna do this either. And then I thought it would be fun if you could open the door and see the inside of the card, but you could also have a faux back there and then have the card open. So you'd have an interactive piece that opened to something and then open the card that opened to something else. But um, whatever you wanna do, there's so many possibilities. So I just thought I would see if I could make this work. So once I have that folding and opening, I can go ahead and attach my doors. I have the ones that I already attached and glued together and did the little shadowing on the edge and I'm gonna put them side by side. So on my card, only one side of the door is gonna open. I'm gonna add a little um, detail to the door that looks like little nails. I love that. I did it on last week's card 
too. And then I'm going to stamp out the images I want to use for this barn with some jet black ink and color with my Arteza Expert colored pencils. I always feel so professional when I use my Expert colored pencils. They're actually from Arteza. I have said the name wrong for so long and learned that it's pronounced Arteza. So if you uh, like having all the things, you know, like colored pencils, watercolor pencils, watercolor markers, alcohol mark, like all the things like I do, Arteza is a great place to shop. They have high quality um, art supplies and they're at a really good price. So I'm going to link these below. And when you click on that link, make sure you just shop around and see what they have. If you need school supplies for your kids, they have watercolors, acrylic paints, uh, whiteboard marker, like they have everything like that. So check them out. All right. So for my colored pencil coloring, I have greatly sped this up because apparently as slow as I am at coloring with alcohol markers, I'm like three times as slow with colored pencils, but it's really relaxing. I feel like I have so much fun coloring with Copic markers. Um, but I, found this to be very relaxing coloring with a colored pencil. So this is what I like to do. I like to color in really light layers. That's why it takes me a little bit longer because I build the color up as I go. I don't immediately press hard with my pencil because that's going to fill in the tooth of your paper and then you're not going to be able to blend any colors together and get a, a shadow or um, a highlight, things like that. So it's easier for me and the way that I found works best is to do mini light layers with my colored pencils. So that's what I do and I like to use this blending stump as well to blend or soften out the colored pencil lines. I haven't used Gamsol on on today's projects not that I don't ever use it but I just didn't feel like I needed it for these images today so they turned out super cute I adore these little animals and I think they just called out to be colored with colored pencils and they worked really good for this scene because I'm using a little bit softer look so that's the look you get with colored pencils versus coloring with markers so I love it. I hope you like it too. Um, let me know below if you are a color pencil type person. Do you like to use them or not? All right, so there's my images. I'm going to go ahead and die cut them out. And actually, I did end up adding a few more chicks, I believe, once I um, was finishing up this card. I think one more chick. So yeah, and you never know. You, it's always good to stamp extras. There they are all die cut out. So cute. All right, so I want my pig to be peeking out of that upper window in the barn, but I don't want him to be attached to the window. So I just lined him up where I wanted him, held him in place and added the glue, and then closed the card to stick him down. And that seemed to work really well. And then I'm gonna add a chick to my fence and the duck to the door, a little bit of little grasses there and my sentiment. And then I die cut from that barn scene builder die set, a little bale of hay that I'll add to the inside after I give it a little bit of shadowing with some Copic markers. I could have also done that with my colored pencils, which I do end up doing on that little tuff of hay. And I added my goat. So when you open the door, you can see the goat and there's his little can. He's being playful. I took a scrap um, leftover from die cutting out my barn shapes and am adding a little ledge for like the upper loft of the barn because I didn't want my pig to be like floating in midair, so to speak. So there you can see I added some um, tufts of hay and another chick. And then I'm just putting a shadow with a gray colored pencil right below that to make it have a little bit more depth. And there it is. Isn't that fun? Such a cute barn. I didn't know what color I wanted to make my barn, but I knew I wanted to do a colored barn. So I just went with one of my favorite colors, which is Cool Pool, and I'm so glad I did. Love how it turned out. Okay, on to card number two. We are making a card that has no line coloring. Okay, so let me just be really truthful with y'all here. I am afraid of no line coloring. I'm afraid of it. I don't think I can do it. But I did, and the really bad part is that my camera stopped recording. So I'm gonna color some more images so you can see how I did it. Um, and I also wanna show you how I sharpened my pencil. I like to turn 
the sharpener and not the pencil. It makes all the difference. Okay, so for the no line coloring, I am doing two pencils, a dark and a light, using the darkest to like outline the image, but not with too heavy of a hand, again, because I like to build up those layers. And I like to blend out from that outer line with the darkest color so that it gets lighter as it goes out. And then I can come in with my lighter color and then blend over the top of what I've already colored and blend that out um, so that it gets lighter as it moves out towards the center. And then I can just go back and forth between the pencils, creating more shadow and um, leaving those highlights when I am working with the light layer. So it's really pretty much the same style or technique, technique of coloring that I did with the first images that were stamped with black ink, um, but I'm just kind of tracing the image with my pencil. And you know, that seems to be what works for me until I colored his eyes. And then he looks creepy. <laughs> my daughter thought he looked creepy too. So uh, he's got crazy eyes. That's just how it's gonna be. They got a little big. This is why it's important to sharpen your pencils. I tried to fix it with the white gel pen and I think that worked okay. He's still a little crazy, so we'll deal with him later. Now I'm coloring out the chick doing the same thing. I did color some of the chicks really light and then I colored a few a little bit darker just for a little bit of variation and I thought they turned out so cute. Okay, so now it's time to die cut these out and I think they look adorable. Very storybook like when you do no line coloring, especially with colored pencils. They're super cute, even the crazy eyed goat. All right, so now I'm stamping the pieces for my second card in the same limestone ink on white cardstock. And then I'm gonna die cut some openings into the barn that will be the cover of this card. And they are going to be windows for my shaker. So I have the window and the door that are gonna be shakers. I'm also going to, ha going to have a sliding barn door, so I need a track for that to slide in. So die cut those out, and then here are all the other pieces I'm gonna to use to put this card together. So I have my windows, my doors, I uh, saved that slider piece that die cut out. Also, I have some pieces that I've cut that are gonna be my, let's call them hardware, for my doors. I have some window sheets, and I have this super thick piece of fun foam. Um, I actually got it from Spellbinders, but it die cut. I was not sure it would die cut, but it did. So then I'm gonna take my front panel and just pencil um, on those openings so that I can also die cut the foam. Um, I was not sure how this was gonna work out. So what I did is I, I taped those into place and then I brought back my cover so I could see if they were lined up good or not. So I brought it in and then I was able to make adjustments where needed and I just did that until I felt pretty sure about where things were placed and I was nervous that it was not going to work out like they wouldn't line up that is a legit concern <laughs> but um it looks pretty good I was pleasantly surprised. I knew the edge might show, so I wanted to trim it down. So I just took my scissors and went around every edge and cut off like a hair, a sliver from that fun foam. I'm gonna set that aside and now it's time to cover up these openings with some window sheets. That will be my shaker windows. And then I'm gonna add some hay to the back of those for some added interest and they uh, glue down right to that window sheet. And then I'm gonna flip that over and add the covering for my window. I love the cool pool accents on this. Now it's time to glue this to the fun foam. So I'm just putting glue all around, making sure that it's going to stick down really well to the fun foam. And you're gonna wanna give that just a minute to dry. And then while that's drying, I'm attaching my detailed piece to my door to a piece I cut out so that it's a little bit bigger than the opening for my door, so it'll cover it. Then I have some fourth of an inch strips that will be the hardware for my sliding barn door. It doesn't really matter how long they are. We're gonna trim them off based on the card. 
I'm gonna, you'll see, you'll see it's coming. All right, so here's my roof. I die cut two, glued them together from Tin Pale cardstock. It's a very pale cardstock, so it's perfect for this project. I'm gonna put my goat on the backer to my shaker panel so that you can see him through the window. He's adorable. And then here's the piece I saved from die cutting that slider opening. I'm pressing that down into the card so the opening has the same pattern as the outside. I also saved the foam piece when cutting out that slider so that I had the same thickness for my door as my shaker. Does that make sense? If you used uh, foam tape, you'd want to use the same foam tape used for your shaker for the door. So you can see here, I'm measuring where I want those to be cut off, and I feel like I could have made them a little bit higher, but it's going to work. I'm going to attach those little foam pieces that I cut and um, using glue dots to do that. It seemed the easiest way. Put that into the slider, flip the card over, put glue dots on the back of those, and then attach a window piece strip that is slightly wider than the opening of my slider track. And that is how the door is going to slide back and forth. You just want to work it a little bit to get it kind of flowing smoothly in that track. I have this bale of hay that I got at the Dollar Tree I, I'm pretty sure, last year, um, a lot of little home, de home decor places, you can find these little faux bales of hay, and that's gonna be the bits for my shaker. I'm gonna put some even in that tiny window, even though it's not really gonna shake, it's just really cute. And then some of those die cut chicks are gonna be in there just loose because you know when you have chicks they run around and bump into each other actually I don't know I don't have chicks but I have a lot of friends who have backyard chickens and so I've been around chicks quite a bit and they're really cute all right so now we're gonna glue on the backer to this shaker that has that goat there and I want to be careful not to get my glue in the way of that sliding mechanism for my door okay so just be careful of that and then we can attach that down once I feel I've got the glue everywhere I need it and there's no hay it was that hay it really you think like glitter gets everywhere this hay I think is worse yeah so there you can see my little shaker windows. Aren't they cute with the little chicks bouncing around? All right, so now we need to decorate the front of this card a little bit more. So I have some more hay that I'm gonna lay down for my goat who's sleeping so he can sit there and then he'll have a little chick on his back. And then I have a chick and a duck to pop up on the door and my sentiment will go there above the goat. I have little grasses and then I'm gonna add those little nails to my hardware for my door. I took the trough image or die and die cut two of those to create a handle for my door. I'm not sure it was really necessary. The best way to move this door is to hold both sides and slide it back and forth. You could also use that to put an, a sentiment on there that would say, you know, push, pull, slide, something like that. I just wasn't feeling it, so I didn't do it. All right, so now I have the other piece that I stamped that will create the back of my card, and I'm using that same hinge that I used on card number one to attach the back to this card, creating a slider shaker shaped card. It's quite exciting. And then we'll add some cute um, images to the inside of the barn. We're keeping the crazy goat inside because, you know, he eats all the things, tin cans, people's clothes. He's crazy with his crazy eyes. So he stays in the barn, yeah. <laughs> so that finishes up this card. Remember, you have a chance to win a card from my video. All you need to do is leave a comment below. I love to hear from you guys. I love to hear what you think of the cards. I love to hear your ideas and just chat with you. So leave me a comment below, let me know what you think. I also have all the things I used to make these cards listed and linked for you below. They are affiliate links and that means I get a small percentage back on the companies that I've chosen to 
to support. So not only you're supporting that company, but you're helping me bring you more ideas. So I thank you so much for all your support. You guys are so sweet to me and I appreciate it more than you know. All right, I will be back again next Tuesday to announce the winner of today's card giveaway, as well as bring you some new ideas with this stamp set. I hope that you are having a fabulous week and you're staying healthy. I will see you all again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.